بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله قول يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله continuing on إمام مقبل بن هادي الوادعي الله يرحمه he began his treaties هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا with that خطبة حاجة after بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحبت في الله the بسملة is from the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Sunnah of the Mursaleen of the Messengers عليهم after الصلاة والسلام so it's from their Sunnah and when Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam sent uh, a message to the queen Saba or queen Sheba as we say in English as is mentioned in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innuhu min sulimana wa innuhu bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim that Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam when he sent a message, a message to her, it said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this event, إِنَّهُ مِنْ سُلِيمَانِ Verily it is from Suleiman. وَإِنَّهُ And verily, <coughs> verily it reads, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. So this is from the sunnah of the Mursaleen to begin their Islamic writings and their messages and so forth with the Bismillah and also with regards to the Bismillah obviously it depends upon the context if you're uh, writing to non-Muslim sometimes you may not use the Bismillah or your emails your business emails or whatever the context so definitely though when it, regarding religious matters when you're going to send a message you're writing a book or what have you, begin with the Basmalah. Begin with the Basmalah. And this is the Sunnah of the Mursali. And the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they sent a letter to Harqal, uh, and it was read, and it read, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Hirqal Azim al-Rum that it read and this is in the hadith that is in uh, Sahih Muslim that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi sent a message to the Emperor of Rome Hirqal and I'm not sure what we say in uh, in English I don't think it's Hercules but uh, that uh, when he, he sent this message, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began it with the Bismillah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he didn't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Emperor of Rome. And so this was the way of Dawah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then it is become a Sunnah in Islam that you'll find the books of the Ulama and the Salaf began with the Bismillah. Likewise, or following that, then the Shaykh 
mentioned they or recited in his risala or placed in his risala the khutbah al hajjah which is also from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whenever he would give a talk or the khutbah or what have you he would make the khutbah al hajjah or even in nikah in marriage the marriage ceremony that's also from the sunnah uh, as narrated by Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala and that the khutbah al hajjah which begins with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah nahmadu nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiruh wa nastahdi and that, that shows humility that here you're beginning by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in alhamdulillah all the praise belongs to Allah and you say we praise him we seek refuge in him we seek forgiveness from him and we seek guidance from him and we seek refuge in him from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our wicked deeds of our deeds and whoever Allah guides there is no misguidance for him and whoever he leaves to go astray there is no guidance for him and then you make that honorable shahada I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that right there, alhamdulillah, the beginning of the khutbah hajjah is so powerful. It's a powerful dua. And it's seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not befitting for us, especially if we're going to give a talk or in a khutbah or a lecture, especially if it's a longer content, to at least uh, follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and bring the khutbah to hajjah And this is how a lot of the ulama, they begin their books with a variation or another of the khutbah to hajjah or at least those components of praising Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, thanking Him, seeking refuge and guidance from Him and forgiveness from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what our Shaykh, Shaykh Muqbal bin Hadi al-Wad'i, Allah Yahamahu, did in the beginning of his risala. And then the ayats that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that are mentioned in the Quran, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the khutbah al-Hajjah, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, ittaqallaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumultunna illa wa antu muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah, his rightful the rightful fear, that true taqwa. And don't die and accept, don't die except in a state of Islam as Muslims. That's that's powerful, that ayah in and of itself, of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers. Ya yuladina amanu wa taqullaha. O you who believe, fear Allah. And fear Him the rightful taqwa, you know, the full taqwa, to the fullest extent. Haq. You know, full taqwa. And do not die except as Muslims. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers to not die except in a state of Islam. Letting us know that we can be misguided. And we've seen countless examples of people going astray. Not just in bid'ah, but bid'ah mukaffara. And leaving the fold of Islam. So we have to praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Islam that he's given us. And constantly ask for forgiveness and guidance in class with the bad Allah Sunnah so that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that state. And this may be a bit off topic, but this is also very it has some relevance too to this. As uh, is known by some of the communities, the individual Murad Storm, he is a uh, you know, he was a spy for the CIA and he and for the Denmark Intelligence Services. And now he's coming out possibly with a, a, a movie and he has his memoirs and the, and the papers are putting out. He was on CNN. This individual, Murad, he was a new Muslim. He came to Yemen. Uh, I know him very well from that time. And he knew Sheikh Mukbil, Allah Yalhamahu. So this is where I'm bringing the relevance to this. 
And obviously, he did not have Tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he openly has left Islam and he worked for the intelligence uh, agencies and, you know, is publishing his memoirs and this and that and the other and has death threats. But what I can say about an individual like that, he was one of those individuals who came close to major people because Sheikh Bukhbil knew him, Allah yarhamahu, personally because the man was that kind of individual. And then, with him being new, he went from <coughs> da'wah to da'wah, not having that tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeing what the takfiris had to say, seeing what the khawarij had to say, seeing what these groups and these groups. So he got in with the extremists, and, and then he, even from his own story, he went to the UK, got with the extremists there, they have videos of him marching with those guys and whatever and all the other activities that they do that the tech videos do in the UK because they can be open. In America, you can't do that. To make a long story short, Habitatullah, he didn't have tawfiq and now he's not even, doesn't even have the light of Islam. So, la tumuntunna illu wa antum muslimun. Do not die except in a state of belief. And there are many people that are lost favor to meet the ulama even, but they didn't have tawfiq and then Later they went astray and even left Islam. That could happen to any of us, Allah. That's why never take it for granted. Never take your Islam for granted. Because as Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, Al Ma'asi Barid al Kufr. That sinfulness is the means to disbelieve. So that you can start by committing a certain sin. And that sin, you keep on with that sin until you believe it is lawful. Or you just keep on to that sin and you move on to another sin and another sin and a greater sin. So next thing you know, you've just left Islam. Not just from the sin, but the sins led you that way. They led you into that direction to where you just gave up on your Lord and you gave up on your Islam. So that, Alhamdulillah, is why it's important to strive in Islam. And don't die and accept, accept in a state of Islam. And fear Allah, uh, the full taqwa. Don't be half hearted. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions also in the next ayah, So the next ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also addresses mankind. Fear your, your Lord who's created you from a single uh, soul and created pairs from you. Uh, and he has, uh, 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 you know, s al allowed for you to spread forth in the land. And has, has made many uh, other people have come from you. When he saw, uh, and fear Allah whom you uh, seek your you, you, you ask for your, your rights from and verily Allah is ever watchful over you so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also commanding mankind to fear him. So in the first ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers, addressed the believers. In the second ayat, he commanded all of mankind. And then the third ayat, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers again. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is truthful. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yuslih lakum a'malakum. Then Allah will, will rectify your, your, your affairs and your, your deeds. And He'll give you forgiveness. So Allah will rectify your affairs and, uh, give you forg and forgive you. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they have gained the full success. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a prescription for success. All those ayats encourage us to taqwa And this is what we see that the Imam, he followed the sunnah of the Mursaleen and the sunnah of the Salaf of his Ummah by beginning his Risala with that 
and urging the people to taqwa Allah and he was known to be a person who practices what he preaches to have taqwa to exhibit taqwa Allah by practicing and loving and exhorting the, and exalting the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and then he said amma ba'd and as for what's next then the Shaykh went on to mention in this part we'll just summarize before we actually get into the meat of the Risala there are some other things that have not been included in a lot of uh, the translations of this and this portion before he began his Risala he just gave a little background talking about the different types uh, that there's different types of Aqidah that there's many people and many sects have divided and, and what influenced him is in, in his travels to Najran as we mentioned uh, when he first came to Saudi Arabia and he saw the Shia and he saw the, these all these groups that they had uh, this the sectarianism and that they divided into groups so the Sheikh mentioned that and he mentioned uh, many many of the source many uh, text textual uh, Evidence is from the Quran about not splitting up and dividing, and that the nation would be divided, and that this is move that this is something sinful, this is not acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is the reality that the people that the people would break in and to divide. The affair, meaning their religion, uh, divide amongst them uh, into various groups, and every group would be satisfied with what is with them. Meaning that people, the Hizbiya, the nature of Hizbiya is that people they divide and they unite upon something. Perhaps something from the deen, only one aspect of the deen, the tekfiris, for example, they unite on making tekfir and sometimes spilling blood and so forth. This is what is their bottom line glue. It isn't that, you know, other aspects, but that's what they emphasize the most, the Khawarij, for example, or the Shia. You know, their various beliefs which unite them, which cause them to divide from the, the, the Muslims as well as all the other his Ahzab, the other groups and sects of Quran al it's their political agenda and their acceptance of every type of Aqidah under one umbrella that makes them, uh, that they're satisfied with this. And this is how they, they rejoice as a group together and unite upon that point. And every group is satisfied with itself, but they're going to be called to account. Likewise, any other his uh, ahzab or groups or hizbis that unite upon a particular aspect of the religion or deny particular aspects of the religion or what have you, <clears throat> whatever they unite, they unite upon a particular sheikh or a particular group of sheikhs or a particular minhaj which goes against uh, the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah or whatever it is that they unite upon, but they divide. And they're satisfied with that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran. And the Shaykh mentioned some poetry, uh, also emphasizing this fact that everyone claims to be on the truth, but not everybody in reality is on the truth. And this is also something that we mentioned countless times, <coughs> this qaida, uh, this, uh, this fiqh principle, What's the ulama say? Qa'id al-fiqir al-ibr bi haqa'id lisa bi musammiyat That the proof of something is, is not in its name but it is in its reality of that substance. So, for example, everyone can claim their Salafi <coughs> but as far as practicing Salafiyah having the manners of the Salaf having the creed of the Salaf the minhaj of the Salaf <coughs> the fiqh of the Salaf this is not... Uh, this is not what uh, many of the people who, who claim this. And that's why we also have people who attack Ahl Sunnah, attack the Salafis, and say, for example, Salafi jihadis, Salafi this, a lot of the Orientalists and think tanks and even some Muslims mention this in their lectures and claim this, like Yasser Qadi mentions this, 
attacking Ahlu Sunnah by claiming that there are Salafi jihadis and there's different Salafi groups, but in fact there isn't. Salafiya is a banner, meaning adhering to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf is Ummah. And issues of Ijtihadat do not take a person from that Salafiya, from that main minhaj, that main creed and usul. Of course, no two individuals are going to agree, but they have a madhab, a minhaj in which they share. This is what makes a person from Ahl Sunnah. So although people claim to be from Ahl Sunnah, even you have the Naqshbandis, you have various Sufi sects, they say we from Ahl Sunnah to Wil Jama'ah, you have uh, the extremists, they say this as well, the Takfiris, and those other groups that just uh, bring about brutality that we've, we've almost not witnessed in this, this time and age, that they claim that they're from Ahl Sunnah. So many groups, the Ashidis, they claim they're from Ahl Sunnah. Many groups claim to be from Ahl Sunnah, but as the Sheikh mentioned, and I've heard him countless times mention this in, in his tapes especially, uh, this piece of poetry, he said, That every person claims to uh, to to gain Layla. You know, they're all fighting for the attention of Layla. And to claim they they have won her heart, basically. And Layla, she doesn't agree to any of them. So everyone is claiming that, but it's a false claim, but she has not accepted any of them. They're all suitors as if they're proposing to her. And likewise, the groups and sects, there's almost suitors claiming that they are from Ahl Sunnah, claiming that they're from the Firqa Tanajia, and that they want to be from that group, but yet what they are upon, their methodology in understanding Islam, their practice of Islam, differs with that radically. And this is the point. So the Sheikh mentioned his experience in the beginning of the treaties with a lot of the Shia, especially the Ismaili, the Ismaili. And that they're in Najran and you'll find some in Medina and you'll find them in Bahrain and also a famous place here where I live now in Qatif uh, and, and so forth that <coughs> you'll find uh, this, this group and they're in the Madhab al-Bataniya that they hide a lot of their uh, their creed and that Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said that they have more disbelief than the Yehud and the Nasara, than the Jews and the Christians. So showing us the danger of some of these deviant groups that have bid'ah mukafara. So the Sheikh talked fairly extensively about that and brought lots of ayat showing ayat showing that uh, that the Ummah would break up and that the danger of sectarianism. And then he began his treaties uh, with the first statement, and we'll mention that in the next sitting instead. But we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.